Hi, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to talk about kind of a touchy subject in the world of firearms, and that is is the brand name worth the price tag? Now, it's no secret that I am a sucker for expensive guns. I've been very open and honest with you guys about that. I own them and I love them. But most people, myself included, are not rich and we don't have a ton of extra money laying around. So the goal is always to find the best product for the least amount of money. And guns are obviously no exception because they're usually not very cheap. So today we're gonna try to answer this question with a gun that I have literally wanted to shoot since I was a child, the HK MP5. Okay, it's actually an SP5, which is the neutered civilian semi-auto version, but it is an HK. And since one MP5 would not be enough to make this video, I got two MP5s. That looks awesome. Now I wanna give a shout out to John from Whisper Tactical. He has a great YouTube channel, definitely go check him out. Both of these beauties belong to him and he's letting me borrow them to make this video, which of course I appreciate. So the HK SP5, this is a very expensive gun, about $5,000 with everything you see on it. And if you look closely, you can see those classic HK markings, which I absolutely love. So five grand, not cheap for any gun, but HK is one of those companies that people are willing to pay for because peace of mind, you know you're gonna get HK quality and it will probably work very well. And the other one that we have is the Century Arms AP5K. This is an MP5 clone and with everything you see on it, it was about 1200 bucks. So literally a third of the price of the HK. It's kind of funny, I posted a picture of these on my Instagram last week thinking everyone would say HK all day and I was wrong. It was the exact opposite. Almost everybody said they liked the Century better and I assume it's because it has the classic MP5 handguard. But is there a difference in function, reliability? Is the HK worth three times the price? Let's find out. I've always wanted to do the HK slap with an actual HK. Oh yeah. Let's see how it feels. Nice. So this thing is very soft shooting. Most nine millimeter sub guns have a good recoil impulse because it's a nine millimeter, but this one is really, really nice. I like it. Before we shoot the other one, let's try some double taps on the HK. I'm gonna have to have a talk with John from Whisper Tactical because he's put optics kind of in the way of the charging handle as if hitting the target is important. We all know looking cool is all that matters and slapping the charging handle looks cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the Century Arms AP5K. Let's see how a $1,000 MP5 clone compares to the $5,000 MP5. Not bad. <laughs> So you can feel a difference. As you can see, this one has a slightly shorter barrel and it might have just a tiny bit more recoil. The HK is probably a little bit smoother, but overall, not that much of a difference. And John actually told me that the HK will run anything and everything, whereas this one prefers 124 grain ball. I don't have any 124 grain ball, so we're shooting 115 grain through it and it seemed to work just fine. Honestly, if a nine millimeter won't run 115 grain ammo, I don't want it. High points will shoot that. <laughs> Since we know the HK is not very picky with ammo, let's give the Century the ultimate test and see if it'll run Steel Case Tula. If it'll shoot this, it should shoot just about anything. Let's try the Texas Star. Why not? <laughs> not bad. Look at that. It ran the steel absolutely perfect. Yeah, this one's definitely nicer, but it also has a slightly longer barrel and a better brace that extends quite a bit. So it's just overall more ergonomic and that might be most of what I'm feeling. Either way, 
they're both freaking sweet. So usually on this channel, we just mag dump into piles of garbage. But for this video, we should probably do some real tests and try to actually give you guys valuable information. So I've stapled a paper target to the railroad tie wall and we're gonna get back at 30 or 40 yards and shoot groups with each of these guns. See if there's an accuracy difference. Starting with the HK and we are at about 30 yards with a red dot. So if the groups are bad, it's probably my fault. Oh, that one surprised me, <laughs> which is good, I guess. Let's check it out. All right, so it's super windy. I'm using a red dot. What other excuses can I think of? Uh, it's not that bad. So I was aiming at the bullseye right here and you can see they went probably three or four inches low. We had one flyer off to the left. If it wasn't for that one, we would have had probably a one inch group. But with the flyer, I would say that is two and a quarter, maybe two and a half inches. And if I didn't suck so bad, the gun could probably get a better group than that. But not bad on a super windy day with a nine millimeter using a red dot. All right, Century Arms AP5K. This one does have a slightly shorter barrel, but it shouldn't affect the accuracy too much. check it out. All right, so do not pay attention to that hole right there. I actually started shooting at this target and realized all my bullets were going way up here. So I shifted my aim down to this target and that put our group right here. And you can see it's definitely a slightly bigger group than we had with the HK, but not that much bigger. I would say this is close to three inches from, you know, furthest hole to furthest hole whereas the HK is closer to two and a quarter, maybe two and a half. So your results may vary, but with me behind the guns, there's definitely an accuracy difference. But is it a $4,000 accuracy difference? I don't know. Now, when it comes to self-defense, obviously most people like to use hollow points. So we're gonna make sure both of these guns can run them and we're using the 124 grain Federal Punch. Starting with the Century. I had 16 left, so we'll shoot eight out of each gun. Uh-oh. And that is our first malfunction. Didn't chamber the round. Not sure why. Two left. And it cycled those. Whoa, it like crunched that bullet too. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it shoved it down into the shell casing and bent the hollow point cavity. Dang it, I was rooting for you. And the HK SP5, once again, shooting the same ammo. The trigger is so much lighter on this one. And, of course, it cycled just fine. Well, I was rooting for the Century because I love affordable clones and it was really starting to grow on me, but the HK did win the hollow point test. It is what it is. All right, guys, that is the result of our MP5 comparison. Yes, most of the time you get what you pay for, and that seems to be the case with the HK SP5. You're also paying for peace of mind when you get something like an HK or a Daniel Defense or optics like Aimpoint, Trigicon, stuff like that. You know that, God forbid, you ever need that product to save your life, most likely it's gonna work, and that's why people will pay more for certain brand names because they have a proven track record. If I had the money, I would definitely spend it on the HK. That being said, I do not think the Century is a bad gun at all. It's a little more picky with ammo and we don't know how it will hold up long term, whereas the HK has decades long proven track record and you know these things will pretty much last forever. Let me know in the comments what your opinion is on this, which one you would rather have, which one you would actually pay for, and if you would like to see more videos like this on different guns, let me know down there as well because I would be glad to do it. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. As always, hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.